Hello, I'm Hazel Johnson and I'm a Technical Services Specialist at Oxford Nanopore Technologies. In this video, my colleague Divya Merrington and I will be taking you through a demonstration on how to perform flow cell priming and how to load your sample. Before flow cell priming and loading, be sure to familiarise yourself with good practice pipetting to prevent introducing air into the sensor array, which could have a detrimental effect on the membranes and subsequently the active pore count. This slide contains hints and tips to ensure successful priming and loading. Avoid introducing air as this will permanently damage the integrity of the pore membranes. Proceed quickly between your 200 microliter priming and library loading as this will aid the speed at which the sample wicks onto the sensor array. Ensure your reagents and your sample are well mixed as loading library beads, LLB, will settle very quickly. Slide open the priming port cover to reveal the priming port. By turning the cover 90 degrees clockwise until you hit a bit of resistance, this ensures the valves are fully opened. Do not try and turn it more than 90 degrees as this could damage the port and valves. Check for small bubble under the priming port cover. Draw back a small volume to remove any bubble. This is done by setting a P1000 pipette to 500 microliters. Insert the tip into the priming port. Turn the thumb wheel or volume adjustment wheel anti-clockwise until the dial shows 520 to 530 microliters or until you can see a small volume of storage buffer in yellow entering the pipette tip. Visually check that there is continuous buffer from the priming port across the sensor array. Prepare the flow cell priming mix as stated in your protocol and mix thoroughly by pipetting up and down. Load 800 microliters of the priming mix into the flow cell via the priming port, avoiding the introduction of air bubbles and waiting for 5 minutes. In the meantime, ensure your sample or library is prepped and ready to load as stated in your protocol. Leaving the priming port open, gently lift the spot on sample port cover to make the sample port accessible. Load 200 microliters of the priming mix into the flow cell via the priming port, not the spot-on sample port, avoiding the introduction of air bubbles. Mix the prepared library gently by pipetting up and down just prior to loading. Add your sample or library to the flow cell via the spot-on sample port in a dropwise fashion. Ensure each drop flows into the port before adding the next one. Gently replace the spot on sample port cover, making sure the bung enters the spot on port. Close the priming port and replace the min iron lid. You are now ready to start a sequencing run. I'm now going to pass you to my colleague Divya Merrington, who will take you through a demonstration of what I've just discussed. In order to prime a flow cell, first open the priming port cover. You'll see that this area here is of a lighter color than the rest of the channel. This is because of an air pocket that needs to be removed before the flush. To remove this air pocket, use a P1000 pipette to withdraw a few microliters of buffer by either raising the plunger gently or twisting the plunger like so. As you draw back the buffer, you'll notice the buffer front move like this. It's important you don't draw back too much at this stage or you risk exposing the nanopore array to air via the other end like so. Once we've removed the air pocket, we load 800 microliters of priming mix through the priming port using a P1000 pipette. Another tip to avoid introducing air bubbles into the system is to not expel all of the liquid into the port, leaving some behind in the tip. After the first flush, we wait 5 minutes and then open the spot on tab. Next, we load 200 microliters of priming flush through the priming port whilst keeping the spot on port open. As we do this, we force the buffer front in the spot on port to rise slightly and displace any air bubbles that may be there. 
This again reduces the risk of air bubbles being pushed onto the array during sample loading. The library needs to be loaded onto the flow cell immediately after the second flush. When you're ready to load the library, use a P200 pipette to add the library dropwise onto the spot-on port. As you do this, ensure the tip only hovers about the port and that it doesn't come into contact with the port. This is because the spot-on port sits directly above the array and we don't want to damage the array or introduce any air bubbles into the system. After you've loaded your library and are ready to run your experiment, close both the priming and spot-on tabs to prevent evaporation and a subsequent change in osmotics during the run. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this talk useful, please browse through our whole lists of videos on nanopore devices, chemistry, software and workflows.